to start making this 7 inch ball shell rocket heading first thing I do when I'm making any ball shell is pop a hole since I'll be using the wasp machine on this uh, shell I'll pop a hole for a magnet I want to just fit a snug I just want to fit a snug uh, quarter inch magnet in a pass fire hole so I've got a hole popped in that casing for the magnet and I will mark how long I want my pass fire tube I cut it just a little shorter yeah, about a quarter inch shorter than uh, half the ID, half the radius, or one of the radiuses of the uh, casing set. And that pass fire tube will come up from the inside of the casing just one quarter inch shy of the equator. I'll put in a, this is about a 5 16th inch ID pacifier tube. I'll put a dowel in there and I'll slide the pacifier tube over that dowel, center it up, hot glue around it to hold it in place. Once that hot glue is cool, I'll pull out the dowel, insert some black match projecting in to the shell a half inch or so, and only going about halfway down the uh, pacifier tube, but I'll stick my magnet in there first. Cut some pieces of black match, go about halfway down inside that pacifier tube and project out about a half inch maybe about two inch long so I'll cut a couple four inch pieces doubled in half Hot glue is cool. I'll pull out the dowel. Let's see, put some masking tape over the outside of the casing where that pass fire hole is. Drop in a magnet and press that down against the masking tape so it's nicely secured there. I can check that with that some ferrous metal to verify that the magnet is stuck to the tape nicely right in that area. And I'm going to stick these two V's of black match down inside my pass fire tube. Having these in place and nosed in place prevents anything from dropping down inside the pass fire tube or when I do open up the outside after taping the shell prevents any of my burst charge or burst charge boost or anything from coming out of the pass fire tube. I'll put a little nosing around that black match. And then I'll be ready to start installing stars into the casings. Uh, 
I'll get my three quarter inch pumped outer pedal stars filled into the casings. Rolled stars are easier to load into a ball shell casing. Pumped stars are easier to make, especially in smaller batches, smaller size batches. Easier to get them up to size real quickly if I want to make enough stars for one or four shells. So it's always a bit of a toss up whether I'm going to design a shell using pumped stars or rolled stars. Fill up both of those about as far on each one and I'll figure the high spots and the low spots will mesh together on this but in these hammies when I close the shell up but I will double check just to make sure I don't have any stars that are sticking up too awfully high I want to have the casings full but I don't want to have to break stars in order to get them closed These are pretty big stars to be using in this size shell. I'd normally use stars that are about 1 12th the nominal shell diameter. 1 12th of 7 inches is, uh, oh, once they got prime on there, more like a 5 8th instead of a 7 8th inch diameter star like these are. Filled about full enough, the two of them. I've got two pieces of tissue paper that I know are going to be big enough, about the right size. I'll fold them in half and in half, keeping this point always the center of the folds that I'm making. And cut discs. Putting that center point down in the bottom of the assembly coming up. I know I want to lap these in about an inch and a half or so. layer of glitter stars in here. I'll be using half inch glitter stars. I may end up putting another star or two in there, depending on how that all feels when I get ready to close the shell.
Now I want to drop a single layer of these half inch glitter stars into these two hemi assemblies. I'll fill them up almost all the way and then I'll put my little three and a half inch cups of my burst cups in there, my burst uh, oh, sphere shaping hemis. I'll be shaping the burst spheres with these three and a half inch casings, which I will remove once those depressions are formed. And I'll use just a little bit of fine pulverone to fill in between these stars too, which will add just a little bit of black powder burst charge to the assemblies too. This is a little different than I normally make double petal shells with rolled stars, but uh, I thought I'd try this quick and dirty double petal construction technique just to see how it goes. Let's see what it looks like up in the air. I like making ball shells and sometimes the double petal shells get a little tedious to make. I'd like to be able to just knock together a quick ball shell that has the appearance of a double petal effect. But have it go a little more quickly and easily and this technique may just accomplish that for me. We'll see once it goes up in the air. I want to wrap my two burst charge forming hemis with tissue paper. I like to have a layer of tissue paper between every component in the shell ball shell assembly. Naturally the one with the hole in it is to go around the pacifier tube in the fused hemi.
get a little bit of fine pulverone, fill in those spaces before I put in the tissue paper liners. There's a little fine pulverone. This will make the construction a little more solid, a little more full and dense. It'll add just a little more black powder into the burst charge, even though this is not a real hot powder. Yeah, it's going to fit in there pretty nicely. I'll fill with a few more half inch stars, a little more pulverum. Then I'll remove these hemis and Fill the, those depressions, those tissue paper line depressions with my 2FA burst charge that I'm going to use. interesting to be playing with. This is sort of how a cylinder shell would normally be filled. It's kind of interesting to be playing with this in a ball shell construction like this. thing about cut stars is there's, a, there's always a few that are a little smaller than the others that can be used to fill in some of the smaller spaces.
This is my good 2FA size hot black powder. This is the Spanish booster. Put my one teaspoonful of booster in each hemisphere. I'd be very interested in seeing how this header pops. It's pretty easy construction, pretty simple. The idea is to fill each of these concentric spheres so they're just proud of the center line so that when the two hemis are mated and closed they have to be tapped together slightly to force them together and have all the contents really good and packed solidly in there Probably put one more pump star down in this low spot here. Let's see. Oh, I think that's going to close up pretty nicely. Look at that. 
little spot here for another star. Get all these stars and black powders and boosters and everything else off the workbench before I go any farther with it. I like to cap each Hemi then with a disc of tissue paper and a stretch wrap mm, covering to really hold everything in place as much as possible while the Hemis are being mated up to each other and the shells being closed. The more the shells pack tightly and the more there's tissue paper separators in between everything the better everything's going to stay in place while the shells closed and finished cut a piece of stretch wrap off a roll that I got at the shipping department, packing department at Home Depot. And I just stretch that down nice and tight around that hemi. Twist it on the bottom. Do the same with the other Hemi. Now what I can sort of do is notice there's two high spots here and there's a couple low spots in that construction. There's a high spot there which will mate up with a low spot over there. I'm trying to mate up the high spots and the low spot in this construction here. And I would just flip that over mating up low spots and high spots. And I will just beat on those gently to not break the stars, but beat on them top and bottom, pushing down gently to bring the two hemis together until I can see that the equators are really closing up nicely. If I haven't tried to cram too much stuff into there, they come together nicely. It's just a little bit of persuasion like this. Everything will be packed in there pretty nice and tightly. Then working my way around with a razor blade and a, some masking tape and I'll remove the stretch wrap and the extra tissue paper I will actually remove this masking tape and replace it with gummed craft tape in a little bit
masking tape. That's if you stick one end of it and pull on the other end, it can sort of act like a spring pulling everything together nicely. This has the pump stars in it, the cut stars in it, so it may not be as absolutely thoroughly full as I'd normally get a shell that has rolled stars and rice hole burst, but I expect this to be pretty nice and crammed tightly full and not rattle too much when I pick it up and shake it, which is the idea. Yeah, that's not rattling at all. Very, very, very little. Taking the shell and rolling the equator a little bit like that. And pulling it together a little bit more in certain spots. And really bring it together nice and snug. Or those hammies are made it up and brought together, the tighter the contents that are in there are going to be. Like I say, I'll replace this masking tape with gum tape right before I tape it on the wasp. The gum tape sticks to the casing a little better, and the wasp tape sticks to the gum tape a little bit better so uh, it breaks a little more nicely without all the tape separating at the equator when the shell bursts how that construction man it's really solid I really like how that construction feels and how it felt when it went together so I'm optimistic I'll get a nice double pedal effect out of that relatively simple construction as I mentioned previously now I want to replace the masking tape on here which has served a nice purpose. I, masking tape works as a nice spring to gradually help pull the hemis together. But now I want to replace the masking tape with uh, craft gummed tape, paper tape, which sticks really well to the casings. and uh, also sticks to itself when I apply more tape with the wasp machine. So the tape doesn't separate at all during the shell burst. It's a little tip that Sean, one of the Sean's, passed along once upon a time and I really like it. I'll apply three or four strips and, and burnish them down. 
I'm using an inch and a half, 70 pound on this particular shell. This piece didn't get thoroughly wet. And I'll just go around the shell and replace all that masking tape with the gum tape. After I get done with these strips running perpendicular to the equator, I'll apply one strip running right over the equator, right around the circumference of the shell, just to reinforce that area just a little bit. That's where the weak spot in the shell casing construction is naturally because the equatorial seam or joint is right there. I like to strengthen that up with just one belly band strip might help reinforce that area just a little bit. And now this shell will be ready to take over and tape on the wasp machine. Make sure I've still got a magnet in there. Yep. I've adjusted the WASP program parameters per the formula in the uh, WASP manual. And I've tested the program on the shell and it's creating a nice crosshatch pattern with an open pole at either side. I do have a magnet in there. So I'm ready to start putting tape on the shell. I'll use inch and a quarter tape on this seven inch shell.
And that has put two of the 14 layers of machine layers of tape on there. It'd be a total of actually 28 layers of actual tape on it. So I will uh, pause this and start it back up as it gets near the end of the taping run. And we're coming up on the end of machine layer 12. It has just switched to 13. So I've got two more machine layers to put on there. And then I'll burnish the tape down. For anyone who hasn't seen the WASP machine in action and what it can do, Jim Whitman revolutionized ball shell taping with uh, this machine. It's, many of us have never looked back, it's just never been the same. It takes all the hard, painful work out of finishing a relatively large ball shell. That's where the magnet is, so I will mark that area for opening up the magnet hole once the burnishing is done. And there's a nicely taped and burnished shell. That's where the magnet is right there. Sharpening up a cork bore so it has a nice edge on it. The paper can dull these cork bores pretty quickly. Putting some magnets where that magnet is inside the shell. Pull my magnet out, and that's ready to fuse and install on a rocket motor once the paper is dry. I'll cover up that hole with a little gummed tape while it's drying, just to be on the safe side. I'll put that in the drying box overnight. That's a really solid, solidly filled shell. Put that in the drying box overnight and she'll be ready to install on a rocket motor. I'll now open up the fusing hole in the taped shell. This is good and dry now. Remember about halfway in that pacifier 
tube. I've got black match stopping. I want black match sticking out of this oh good no. inch or so. So I'll stick some black match in there. I want to double that up, make sure it can't fall out easily. Yeah. That should provide good pass fire into the top of the in, from the top of the motor into the shell, and that fusing will not drop out of there easily. I've got my the top of my motor drilled and uh, fused with more black match and that black match will pass fire to that black match and ignite the heading when it all goes. I've got plenty of black match in the end of the rocket motor. The spindle that I made the rocket motor on serves as a nice stand for the rocket motor while I get ready to install the heading on there. I'm going to unpower my hot glue gun and put a nice bead of hot glue around the top of the motor. And I'll just stick the heading fusing right down in the top of the motor. There's plenty of black match in there to really ensure a good positive pass fire from the top of the motor into the heading and ignite it. Now I'll just flip this over. And I'll reinforce the joint between the motor and the heading with plenty of hot glue. I actually put one layer, one fillet on here, let that cool, then I'll put another fillet on there. Because it's a pretty heavy heading and you know, the, although it doesn't get real rough handling between here and the field to launch it, I don't want the heading breaking off the motor. So I make sure this is a good strong fillet. I'll let this cool for five or ten minutes and then install another fillet over that one. Now that first layer is good and set up. I'll just put a second layer on there. Lapping up just a little higher and lower. Reinforce that all just a little bit. I had some rockets like this in the, uh, I think it was the Star Spangled Banner, maybe the All Stars segment of the Friday night display at the convention one year. And I wanted to sit in the stands, and the guys out at the rocket line offered to uh, load and shoot these big rockets for me. Well they looked good during the display as I was sitting here but I noticed one did not go up in the air so I was wondering what happened to it. So after the display I went out to the field the rocket line and looked inside the uh, ready box container and there was my rocket the stick and the motor were in one piece and the heading was laying next to it separated from the stick and the motor. And the guys apologized. It was a rainy night and one of them was carrying it out to the launch tube and uh, he slipped and fell and the rocket hit the ground and the heading popped off the motor. I'm not sure even this kind of attachment would withstand that kind of abuse but I'd like to give it the best chance possible. And once this is set up, 
that's going to be a good substantial connection between the motor and the heading so it, it has a good chance of getting up in the air so uh, besides letting that cool off and then attaching some fusing nosing and sticks that baby is ready to fly Selling.